wrong building. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all today. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm saying hello from Constance, Germany. Right over here is Lake Constance, and as you can tell, it is absolutely gorgeous. The water is so clear. It is absolutely beautiful. Look at this. They got a little... Check out the little birdies. So for today's video, I want to share with you guys a story of John Huss. John Huss was one of the very first reformers. In fact, he came, I believe, about a hundred years prior to like Martin Luther and some of the other very well-known uh, Protestant reformers. So one of the primary things that the city of Constance is known for is this thing called the Council of Constance, which is actually kind of a really silly story. Uh, the Catholic Church at that time had a lot of corruption and like political warfare and things going on. So there was this Pope, but uh, a lot of people didn't like the Pope and the King especially didn't like the Pope and said, you know what, you no longer get to hold this title. In fact, I'm going to appoint another guy as the Pope. So there were two Popes in the Catholic Church at one time. And, you know, of course, there was a lot of argument as to who is the true Pope and who isn't. And, and both of these Popes were constantly fighting with each other. So eventually a third guy arose and basically this guy was saying, you know what, both of you guys are acting really childish. You guys are acting very unchristlike. So neither of you guys are popes. I'm the new pope. And so th there's three different popes at one point in time for the Catholic Church. And all three of these popes basically said the other guys, they were all antichrists. So this is where the council came into play because uh, for about six months they met here in Constance and they argued and argued about who was right and who was wrong and eventually they basically said all three of these popes, none of you guys are right and now there's a fourth pope. So this is obviously when John Huss comes on the scene, again about a hundred years before any of the other major reformers, but he had the advantage of during this time frame when he was talking about righteousness by faith and some of the abuses and practices of the Catholic Church, uh, the church was a little bit busy with, you know, three or four different popes all calling each other antichrist. And so he was able to get a lot of work done in the local area and to really uh, kind of stir the pot theologically and intellectually. So John Huss had about 20 or so years where he's able to freely preach uh, the gospel and to teach people. But eventually the church sorted out all of their disagreements and were able to get together and capture John Huss. And this is actually the monastery where he was detained. And eventually John Huss is executed. I believe he's burnt at the stake for his teaching on righteousness by faith and some of the other things that he was sharing. <laughs> So that right there is the actual tower that John Huss was kept in while he was a prisoner before he was taken to go get burned at the stake. Uh, the guide is saying that the windows that are there, they actually weren't there, or at least they were much smaller while he was uh, held here prisoner. But now they've transformed this building into a hotel. So something that's really cool about this city is that everywhere you look, it looks like the, the buildings all match. And I just learned that if anyone ever wants to like put art on the wall or to paint a building a new color, there's a committee here in Constance that has to approve your color scheme. That way everything in the city tends to match. So directly behind me is a stone with the name John Huss on it. And this is the, pl this is the exact spot where John Huss was burned at the stake. So they brought him here and they you know, gave him multiple opportunities to recant, to basically retract the teaching that he had given at the time. And, and, and the, 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 the heresies that he was teaching was basically that, you know what, you don't need a priest to go to God. Jesus is priest enough and you can just go directly to God in light of what Jesus has done for you. So here he is, he's at this place and he's being burned at the stake. And it's really amazing that as he's being, as they're lighting the fire, uh, John Huss isn't afraid, he isn't terrified. All he's doing is he's just singing. So eyewitness accounts of this event actually say that while uh, he was being burned, as, as the flames were engulfing him, John Huss exclaimed, I'm not feeling the pain, I'm not feeling the pain. In fact, he actually kind of, I, mean, I don't know if this was a joke, but he actually said that I'm most likely gonna die from the inhalation of the smoke than I'm actually gonna die from the fire. He would also say that uh, at this moment, you guys are cooking a goose. And the reason why he said that is because his last name, Huss, uh, I guess it means goose. He says, right now you're, you are, uh, you're cooking a goose, but in a hundred years, there will arise a swan whom you will not be able to roast. 
And uh, what's really interesting is that 102 years later, this happened in 1415, uh, 100 years later in 1517, Martin Luther nails a 95 thesis uh, on the door of the Wittenberg church. And Martin Luther's uh, family crest, his family symbol is a swan. So even at this moment, uh, Huss had a, little, had, had a glimpse of, uh, of the prophetic gift and seeing into the future of what God would be doing. We're about to go into the Huss Museum. So this is actually the hat that they would have put on John Huss with a little dragon symbolizing heretics so that everyone would know that his teachings were deemed heretical. So if you guys remember that tower I showed you earlier where John Huss was held prison, this is actually the original door to the prison that he was at. All right, we just got out of the bus after a few hours and we are in Strasbourg, which is in France. And this is, our, I guess, our last location uh, of our trip right now. <laughs> There's grandma. Grandma wants to be on camera. Yeah, Hi grandma. Uh -huh. You having Hi. fun? Having fun. Yeah? Hard walk. <laughs> Hard walking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like auntie's trying to vlog too. <laughs> So one thing that's kind of interesting about Europe in general, but certainly of Strasbourg, is just how many people go cycling. It's, it's kind of crazy. There's always a cyclist nearby. So this is a statue of Johann Gutenberg, the inventor of the printing press. So this giant church behind me is the Strasbourg Cathedral, which for a little over 250 years was the single tallest building in the world. Well, that's it for today. We made it back to our hotel. Uh, I don't know about you, but today was actually, I think, my favorite day out of the entire trip so far. I really loved learning quite a bit about John Huss. There was a lot of information actually that I didn't know about him prior to today in fact i even got one of the uh, books that they were selling at the uh, the little hotel there and i'm really excited to learn more about him and one takeaway that i'd like to share with you guys about him obviously there's a lot that you could say but it was just how god can use people from very humble beginnings uh, the story of john huss actually starts with him not having a father um, and it was basically he was very poor, had no father, had no education, he had, basically had nothing except for a mother that would pray for him. And this mother was so dedicated to praying for him and just trying to do the best so that he could have every opportunity possible. Well, he got lucky in, in the event that someone offered him a charity scholarship so that he could go to school and to study and to be able to, to, to learn a lot. But what, what, what mattered more than that he had this kind of hand-me-out is it, kind of like, you know, the, the chip on his shoulder that he had this, this desire to prove himself uh, uh, that he was worthy of it. So John Huss, all the way throughout his schooling, became a very astute student, very hard worker. And I think it's just a huge testimony that, you know what, no matter where you come from, no matter what your background is, if you give God your best, God is going to use that and multiply it a hundred times. And so I want to just challenge uh, all of you guys and challenge myself uh, to really look inwardly and say, you know what, maybe I don't have all the advantages that other people have, but you know what, what would God do through me if I gave him everything? And that's a question I want to leave you guys with uh, tonight. And I want to challenge you to give your best to God. Oh, and also before I end this video, a lot of you guys have actually been asking me how you can support this channel, how you can support the vision and the ministry that is the That Christian Vlogger YouTube channel. Um, so if you would like to, not that you have to, but if you would like to support this channel to make videos like this possible in the future, there is a link in the description under this YouTube channel called patreon.com slash that Christian vlogger. And that's a website where you can donate uh, just small amounts of money just to help this project go forward and to make sure that there are videos like this in the future for young people to be able to enjoy and to be inspired by. Again, it's not a requirement as these videos will always be free, but if this is a vision that you would like to support, your support would be very, very much appreciated. Um, but as I like to say, until next time, I'm that Christian vlogger and I wanna encourage you to experience faith in the first person. God bless. If you look closely right there, you can see four women, which uh, represent the church, with uh, swords in their hands, piercing the heads of heretics below. Clearly, this is a Catholic church.